I became a student at John Jay in 1968. In 1973, graduate of John Jay. So I came to John Jay in January of 1977. I graduated in 1986. I'm originally from upstate New York, so moving to New York City was probably the biggest change of my life. And I decided to go there because I wanted to become a police officer like my mother. So they told me about John Jay, came highly recommended as the criminal justice school. John Jay kept coming up as the best for forensic science. I got my transcript at high school and I asked the person next to me, hey, give me the name of some of the colleges you're applying to. I envisioned going to college was gonna be open lawns and you know, uh, uh, reading under a tree. and I wanted the closest school to my house, if I could have enough money to even get on the train to school. Uh, it was a school that would take me. Thank goodness in those days it was open admission, which turned out to be uh, awfully good for me and I didn't realize it at the time. When you think about John Jay being 50 years old, uh, 50 is a young age, but it's not only its age, it was when it was born. It was born during the 60s. Uh, to come about and being born during that period of time, it produces a special child. Law and order was the catchword of the day. It's hard to believe today we said you can't trust anybody over 30. I mean, the very fact that the college was first called COPS, the College of Police Science, tells a lot about what the original focus was on the part of the faculty they chose the name. A small group of senior faculty members came up with the name John Jay because he was associated with New York. He was a governor of New York. He was uh, involved with the Anti-Slavery Society, and one of the founders of the Anti-Slavery Society, and also because he was the first Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. It was a very small student body, I would say, when I first started to be measured in the hundreds uh, because it was at the police academy. Uh, then we were like the wandering college. Uh, we wound up wandering up to Park Avenue South, uh, which was a bit of a debacle from an elevator usage point of view. And then a few years later, we moved to, uh, you know, North Hall, which was the old I. Miller Shoe Factory. Women were almost an exotic species. Well, for example, there was no women's room in the police academy. So one morning I came in, and the girls were all sitting on the floor of the bathroom with geraniums in the urinals. And I said, what is going on? What are you doing? And they said, you wouldn't give us a bathroom. So that was the first protest. It really was the birth, of the idea of criminal justice was at John Jay, and it was a work in progress. It was a liberal arts institution. The students were all in-service police officers, but the educational opportunities for those students included English and history and chemistry and social studies. In 1970, the City University began what was called the Open Admissions Program. The student body doubled in 1970. It doubled again in 1971. It allowed us to hire a lot of great <laughs> new faculty. And suddenly arrives, you know, blacks and Puerto Ricans and Irish Italian working class kids. And looking at these long haired kids coming into the elevators and going, who are they? Well, we're here. And this uh, young, uh, uh, vivacious, uh, high energy, Afro wearing lady with uh, knee high boots comes in and stands up in front of the class. And I'm thinking she can't be old enough to be the professor here. And I remember she would stick it to us and provoke us into dialogue and that dialogue some you know when half the class is armed you got to be careful how spirited the dialogue gets but the point was that all they had to do was defend what they said by doing critical readings and by reading a lot this kind of a dynamic in a democratic society is very very good you need people who don't agree with one another to disagree publicly and understand one another so we had a wonderful sociology faculty member named Abe Blumberg, and he had a student in his class. I don't know if it was known to him or not that this was an FBI officer. And Abe Blumberg said something negative about uh, J. Edgar Hoover, and the student challenged it. And Abe Blumberg, being a great teacher, said, why don't you research it? And make a determination yourself. And he wrote up his paper and uh, made the mistake of giving it to the typing pool. And Director Hoover uh, demanded that 
the professor, A. Blumberg, be fired from the college. J. Edgar Hoover told uh, Donnie he had to remove 36 agents. You have to understand a demand from J. Edgar Hoover. This is a man who intimidated presidents. And John Riddle said, I will not fire a faculty member for doing his job. And Hoover did pull every FBI agent and send this particular student to what was then Siberia for the FBI, which was Butte, Montana. A proud day in the history of the college, even if it wasn't a good day at the time. But we established that we were a real college. A decade later, the city went into fiscal freefall and lost its financial footing. And all sorts of things were back on the table in terms of whether they were affordable by the government, including public universities, including in particular John Jay. And they wanted to cut, that is, eliminate John Jay College of Criminal Justice completely. We were letting people who normally would not have had the opportunity, the chance, the ability to have an education, we were being punished by being closed down, being targeted. It was so short-sighted. They offered uh, Jerry Lynch that if he laid low, they would make him a dean at Baruch. The president of Baruch called me down and said he'd give me a deanship and I'd have all sorts of very good research possibilities and so forth. And I said, no, I, I'm not going to even consider it. The administration said to everybody, if you know somebody who has any influence, use, use that influence. And demonstrations uh, marching in the streets with police officers parading from, from Hell's Kitchen, the west side, over to the Upper East Side, to the CUNY offices. You had cops stopping traffic at the intersections so that the, that the protests could pass through. There was a wonderful sense of togetherness, and also it was students and faculty marching together. Uh, that was a tough fight. I'm proud of the people who were still here and who made that fight, and particularly Jerry, uh, Jerry Lynch. They did a great job, and they saved the college. You know, when you, when you think about your life back, what you've done, this, was, this is one of the best things I think I've ever done. And I'm very glad to hear this day is here because that's 30 something years later and, or is it four, 40 years later, that uh, the college is alive and kicking. Thank you. After the fiscal crisis, our educational offerings were constrained. They were limited by the university. And uh, now, 10 years ago, we once again opened up majors in English and history. And now we have gender studies and philosophy and law and society. I'm an English major in the BAMA program in forensic psychology. In public administration and a minor in music composition. In criminology with a minor in psychology. I'm studying security management. I majored in politics, law, and economics. Management operations and human resources. My major is criminal justice. Fire and emergency services with a minor in chemistry. My master's in forensic mental health counseling. Political science with two minors, history and English. I love those three so much. Our history has always been about providing access and giving the best education that we can, and so justice is embedded in our history. You know, a lot of models of many colleges and universities are in Latin, and nobody really knows what they are, right? This, this model here is in English, and it's fairly clear. Everything we do or we decide to do, making sure that you find a way to incorporate social justice was what graduating from John Jay meant to us. When I was in law school, most of the students were there for one reason only, to make money. It's not the same of the John Jay student. And the quality is a kind of selflessness, a kind of thinking of others, uh, and it makes them very dear. Either go to the Peace Corps or join FEMA or other government agencies. To work with youth through music and other forms of art. Underrepresented or marginalized groups, I like to, to fight for. I want to really become a principal one day and I want to start my own school. I want to be a social worker for immigration. My career as a paramedic would be a stepping stone to be a medical doctor. I think that because the college had to fight to keep itself alive, it created a real sense of community amongst the faculty and staff here. You have the feeling that you can do things. For a professor to enter an institution and be part of its now future vision. That's something that, that, that's extraordinarily rare. 
because I've seen other places and I've seen professors not care. And no matter what happens here, you know that the professors care. I first came to John Jay and was just lost. My first day was frightening. <laughs> um, I actually felt seven feet tall as I was walking through the building, so I knew, yes, I definitely had to be a John Jay. A phrase that I left home with, my mother said, good, better, best, never let it rest until your good is better and your better best. During those difficult times of challenging courses that pushed me and compelled me to reach down deep and find something inside me, uh, the students, the faculty, uh, the counselors, they were all there. All the students really seem to need is a drive to do the work and someone that cares and is interested in their progress. She encouraged me to go to the writing center because I wanted to learn how to make my writing better. And sometimes you just have to plant that little idea in their head and just watch them, you know, grow. So we're now in year two of Macaulay Honors College. It is an eight campus consortium honors college for CUNY. And these students are, are academically outstanding, they're talented, they're interested in service and community. Macaulay brings students of varying backgrounds, many students who are first in their family to go to college. I'm the first Arab woman in my family to have graduated. They were like, oh, you really need to go to college. You're first generation. We believe in you. You can do it. If you want to know one of the essential things about what the history of New York City is that we're going to be looking at, it's you. There are over 100 languages spoken in New York alone. Isn't that extraordinary? I met a lot of people from all over the place. I met people from Africa, different parts of Europe. Sitting in my one class, I have probably up to 10 different cultures and backgrounds put into the class discussion. Black, white, Latino, Irish would all be in your classroom. You had the firefighter and then the communist and the liberal and the conservative all just battling it out in one class. One of the things that's so important about diversity is diversity is where newness emerges. So John Jay's own relative youth links to the very future of the United States in fascinating ways. The level of innovation for a younger school, the nature of the student body, um, it's got a whole different look and feel to it. We are now a senior college, a all baccalaureate institution with master's and doctoral programs. Those students who don't meet the new standards are now enrolled in those programs that we design in the community colleges, and there are 9,000 students in John Jay design programs in the community colleges. It'll make us an institution that will have uh, even more academic offerings, particularly at the graduate level, engage the professions, the communities of practice. We are the largest law enforcement agencies on the globe. John Jay has often played a role in advising these institutions. You know, every time we look at an issue, whether it's on policing, on an innocence project, on DNA evidence or forensic science, and the reoccurring theme over the last decade has been John Jay is now a go-to college for expertise as it relates to the faculty. John Jay is helping me and my team here build our new Crime Strategies Unit, which is a new unit that is dedicated to dealing with gun violence before it occurs. New York is John Jay. John Jay is New York. I've had students in Iraq I've had students in Afghanistan, I've had students in South Africa, and I've had students in Dublin who were able to use our technology and John Jay Online to reach out to our students around the world. You look at the great work that President Jeremy Travis has done as it relates to captivating sort of the international community around this curriculum, I think it's pretty extraordinary. So part of our challenge in this 50th anniversary is really to step it up and to make sure that we are prepared to take on many of the challenges that an increasingly interconnected world has for us. We joke, I had a student the other day say, this is life or death, professor. Of course, it's a joke, it's not life or death, but on the other hand, it is life or death. That is to say, what does it mean for a moment in your life, four years in your life, five years in your life? What does it mean to have that redirect and reorient uh, everything about not only who you are, but who your family is and who they will be? So this question of the future, I think, in so many ways, uh, weighs heavily on our students. One of the great things about John Jay for me is I was always involved in politics and government. I was running around working for 
selling with Jerry Nadler, and you could take a course in the morning, and if you had to go to a meeting, you could take the course at night and vice versa, and that was very helpful to what I would ultimately get to do in my life. Early in my uh, college life, I was a legal studies major. My family said I always talk too much, so I should be a lawyer, and it was the internship office uh, where I signed up uh, for the New York State Assembly and interned for the very guy that I eventually would replace in the assembly. It was at John Jay that I learned the difference, I hate to admit this, in terms of a state senator and a U.S. senator. I learned the fundamentals, not in high school, but in John Jay. So I have no doubt that had it not been for John Jay, I would not be here today as Brooklyn District Attorney. And it had a huge impact on my professional careers, both in the social services and what I do today. John Jay is a beautiful place, so it should have a beautiful building. It was a very pleasant surprise because I found a home away from home. And, you know, I would spend anywhere from 12 to 13 hours on campus and, you know, I would, I would enjoy every second of, of being on campus. It looks like something that really honors the students that come here. Having three floors and access to all the instrumentation, I mean, no matter, we were able to produce before, but now we can produce in you know, five different fields. Everyone that I am currently going to school with is going to do great things in life, and I think that if, if we do lose touch, you know, personally, I think at one point or another we're going to run into each other. Frankly, it's a, it's a wow kind of moment to see how it's grown. Several hundred students when I started, 15,000 students today. And I think that's, uh, that's what celebrations and anniversaries should be about. Celebrating achievements, certainly. But celebrating the platform it is to achieve the dreams it has for the future. If you think about it, 50 years is not that long, right? That in somebody's life, it's maybe halfway. In the life of a college, it's just the beginning. So we've built a platform. We have a new building. We have an identity. We have a mission, very clear about that, and now we're ready to jump off that platform into the next 50 years. And so when people say, well, you were only around for 50 years, yeah, baby, those were some difficult 50 years, and we were born through the fire, but we came out not smelling like smoke, but leaving everybody else in the dust. I'm looking forward to the next 50 years and encouraging the next generation of John Jay students uh, to be successful and to do great things and, and hopefully uh, I'll, I'll go back, I want to go back and still finish my master's program um, at John Jay and sit in the lawn up in the uh, new park uh, outdoor terrace that they have there and read my book under the tree like it was supposed to be when I first got there. So I'm going to come full, full circle, go back to John Jay and have that experience. <laughs>